even though I was born and raised on an organic and biodynamic farm, there was a time almost 50 years ago when my dad made the choice to use glyphosate to kill weeds when it first came out and was being introduced to farmers as this uh, miracle chemical. He used it for a very short time and he still feels like there are major implications and consequences from using that chemical. A couple of years ago, I got to sit down with him and ask him some really pointed questions about why he thinks glyphosate is so dangerous and why he thinks we need to stop using chemicals and glyphosate to grow our food. I'm really excited to share this conversation with you. I'm Natalie Forsbauer, founder and editor-in-chief of Heart and Soil Magazine. If you haven't grabbed a subscription yet, head on over to heartandsoilmagazine.com and you can grab one for just $39.99 a year. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Heart and Soil TV, like and share if it resonates. You make yourself an amazing day. Enjoy the conversation with Hans Forsbauer. You have to consider the time, right? You want to make a living. You have a family to support, whatever. And there was no market. I mean, there was no organic certification. There was nothing, basically. There was Wild West. They had a little warehouse and a bunch of, well, whatever. They called them hippies. <laughs> right. And my wife, she bought wholesale through them and bought organic food basically whenever she could and it was a buying club and it just grew over a period of time after in mission it was a, on the hillside so it was not really for vegetable farming it was really difficult basically so we just had cows a few cows and calves raised them and I bought the farm in in Matsque. it's it was 17 acres and it it was started the blueberries had been planted on 10 acres but they'd been neglected totally and it was before blueberries became the rage or whatever right. it was the very beginning then so I planted more blueberries or got one acre going and then planted more blueberries and we also did vegetables at the same time and Mary would go to from store to store and selling them right and at the time did you use um, Roundup to get you through later on later on I did yeah in 70 well basically I I always went to the horticultural short course, like it's called the Pacific Ag Show now. It's the industry, you know, where you learn new stuff and whatnot. Yeah. And in order to use pesticides, you had to take the course. And that's where I was introduced in the Roundup. They were telling you, oh, they have this brand new chemical herbicide and it's so safe. It's the safest, the lethal dosage is you know, it's safer than salt, basically. That's what they said, told us. And the, the person who who taught, gave that course at that time, he was in charge of the Pacific uh, Research Center at San, in Saanich for Agriculture Canada, where they would test the pesticides and approve them or not approve them. And, he always stressed how careful you have to be with pesticides and some of these other ones that have a, quite a high lethal dose, like a high rating, they're pretty lethal. Mm -hmm. And he also, I guess to bring home his point, he said of his co-workers who've been there working for 30 years or 35 years, <laughs> they were all dying. And that upset him, right? And he was getting to that age. They all died of cancer. So, well, what are you going to do, right, with that information? Yeah. And at the same time, he also talked about Roundup, right, how safe it was. And they went... And it, I guess the research showed it was safe, totally safe the safest, whatever, and it's so effective, it kills all weeds, whatever. That's farmer's dream, I suppose. Yeah. 
But there is one caveat, and it disappears, right? They also said it disappears. That's what Monsanto sold it. It, it disappears. That means it gets eaten by other microorganisms, or mm -hmm. it, like uranium, has a half life or whatever of 60 years. But it, yeah, it disappears. But it also has a half life, so it's around forever, kind of. <laughs> In theory, a half-life means it never, ever, ever goes away. It only just goes to half of half of half of half of half. <laughs> yeah, in some research lately I've seen where they said a like, glyphosate has a half-life of uh, 30 years or something like that. But they said it totally disappears. But when they got approval on the research, They only tested it for three months, basically. So, and it appeared that it was just about all gone, or it didn't show up to be significant, right? So the theory was it disappeared totally. I mean, that's the assumption they jumped to, whatever. But anyways, the instructor, he told us, don't spray it in, in, a, in your greenhouse. And he... They said, well, somebody asked why, and he says, because for two or three or four years, four years, you can't, you won't be able to grow a crop, which set alarm bells off in my brain, you know. <laughs> Here's a deadly chemical, and they say it disappears when you use it, but don't use it in the greenhouse because it'll kill your crop. So I say, it persists in the environment, right. which is now common knowledge that it does. It's everywhere. It's, it's insanity so, so so basically they they got approval on faulty research and they buried the research it's 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 in the archives of the government and money and the approval like Monsanto and and the FD, FDA down the states there he went back and forth to the main some of the main people and they made the regulations for Roundup or whatever. I mean, later on when it became GMOs, because it's married to GMOs, and then it became even greater use. Grateful you joined us for that conversation and interview. If you haven't subscribed to Heart and Soil Magazine yet, head over to heartandsoilmagazine.com. Click on that subscribe button and join us for just... $39.99 a year. You make yourself an amazing day and I'm really grateful you're part of our community.